This is an interesting variation of a campaign chest. And as you can immediately see, it looks a little bit unusual. You've got a normal uh, campaign chest top half, but the bottom half is actually a cupboard. Well, the reason for this is that the top half would pack into your bottom half for travel and uh, it would take up half the space of a normal campaign chest where you'd have two halves which would each have two cupboards. So if say you had uh, two campaign chests you might have an ordinary one and perhaps an older shot it would take up less space but give you just as much storage and in fact um, a more variation on storage because you've got the drawers at the top you've got the cupboard at the bottom which would have a shelf which would slide in so uh, perhaps make it a little bit more versatile. It's made of teak, it's got uh, typical uh, brass campaign flush handles of a period, quite nice in that they've got a gilt lacquer on. Why do they put gilt lacquer on the campaign handles? Well again if you're in a hot climate the brass is going to start to uh, get verdigris on it, you're going to spend your life cleaning the, uh, the brass. The lacquer would protect them, keep the look. Quite often they did a gilt lacquer, so it would just lift it a little bit as well, make it a little bit smarter. And of course, the, the danger is these days, a lot of people don't realise that. The first thing they do is get the brass out, clean the brass handles and the corners and straps, remove the lacquer, and then they're going to spend the rest of their life cleaning the brass. So, um, quick tip. Don't overclean the brass. Check first of all if it's got a lacquer on. If it has, for goodness sake, please leave it. So let's have a bit of a closer look at this chest. Now most older shot uh, campaign chests were made by the Army and Navy store. And if we open up this top right hand drawer, we can see that they've got their little logo inset there. It says Army and Navy CSL makers. That was very typical of the Army and Navy store to, uh, to insert a little plaque on the top right hand drawer. Um, other attributes of this chest uh, immediately point out to us that it's very likely that it's made by Army and Navy store. The shape of the foot, uh, the size of the brass um, corners and strap works, these little uh, cut molding lines to the drawers, the type of handle, all of these things if you handled enough um, make it uh, make the maker stand out to you. The drawer linings are teak and if we remove the drawer we can see that on the secondary pine wood here we've also got a series of numbers stamped in. They would have been the, the model number perhaps or perhaps a reference to the cabinet maker who made it and again that's fairly typical of the army and navy store. Now in their catalogue of 18 83. They describe this type of chest as a brass mounted chest of older shot or hut drawers, very suitable for officers of militia regiments. Older shot drawers with painted deal doors at a price of £4, 13 shillings, and 60. In 1907, um, they were still making it and they described it as a chest of older shot pattern or hut drawers comprising one long and two small drawers mounted on and packing into a printed deal case. It was available in teak, like this example, at six pounds, 13 shillings, or a little bit more expensive in mahogany at 16 pounds, 15 shillings, 60. You could also buy an oak one at 16 pounds, 11 shillings and 90. We've, uh, I don't think ever seen an oak one. Um, and, uh, it's probably very likely that it wasn't as popular as mahogany and teak, so not as many were made. Now, in the description, it said that the top was mounted on and packing into a printed deal case. So what do they mean by that? Let's have a bit of a closer look. Well, this is the painted um, or printed deal case. And it's the first example of an old shot chest that we've seen like this, despite the description. The ones that we've had in the past, they've always been painted either very dark green or black. Um, this one has got a faux wood painted effect on it. And you can see on this panel door here, that's really quite 
nicely done. And that's what they mean by printed. This door, in fact, uh, look at the grain that's been painted on that even better. And the attention to detail is fantastic because they've even painted it to the inside of the panelled doors. They've carried on with the effect. Even on the back of the lock here, that's painted as a faux wood as well. Well, let's dismantle the chest and uh, pack it into its cupboard. So you can really see what it looks like when it's disassembled. Now, we've got a nice molding here, which contains the top section. This is made to give it a nice finished look and that removes to pack away. So it breaks into three pieces. So you've got two sides and you've got a hinged middle section. They've got metal lugs on them so that they'll fit to the top of the packing case um, and also to each other just to make them nice and secure. So when you're packing up your chest to travel, you can simply remove them, put them in the drawer, pack it up and away you go. So we can see that a little bit closer here that the edge is um, cladded in tin all around to make it nice and secure. The doors, the hinges on them, are made to open all the way back to make it even easier to slide your packing case in. Most um, cupboard doors, of course, the hinges wouldn't let them go that far back. Right, well, let's take the top off and put it in. So there we go, all packed down into uh, less than half the size to make it far easier to move around and transport. And now that it's packed down, we can also see on the top here, there's more Army and Navy store stamped numbers which correspond to those ones that we saw on top of the drawer dividers. You'd also have bolts which you would uh, fix through here to uh, further secure the door, make it really quite easy, uh, quite strong and safe for travelling. If we turn it round, we can see we've got lovely great big carrying handles here, really uh, nice and strong and a good size, make it much easier to move around. Now, you may have noticed to the side of this older shop chest, another half chest over here. Well, that's quite a good example of uh, what happens with a lot of older shop chests. Uh, Late generations don't realise, perhaps, that the packing case that uh, they've got in the outbuildings or whatever are actually the base to an old shop chest. They don't want to throw away the top, but they wonder what on earth happened to the bottom half. Quite often they think maybe it's just the top half of a campaign chest, but actually it makes a very useful coffee table. And they do, uh, with lots of storage because of the drawers. One quick way you can tell whether the, it's the top half of an old shop chest rather than a standard campaign chest is that it won't have any uh, lugs or holes to the underside. If it's a campaign chest, you've got to locate the two sections together and the top half will either have uh, some lugs to fit to the bottom half or holes for the bottom half to fit to the top. So there you go, a lovely example of uh, Army and Navy store older shot or hut chest and it stands out really for having the faux painted doors which is a little bit more unusual to most we see. Great piece of travel furniture.